Today on Remnant Voice, we continue with part two of the message, The Nehemiah Mandate. Now this was shared at Awaken Life Church in Fayetteville, Tennessee at, with my good friend and pastor, Daniel Baker. Be sure to check them out at awakenlifetn.com. Then all of a sudden, you start organizing the families, getting the families equipped, putting them in their positions. You're getting sons and daughters discipled. Saints are being equipped for the work they're called to. All of a sudden, you're getting the attention of the religious again. And now that they see that you're making a little bit of progress, what they thought was funny has now become and made them furious. <laughs> well, Jesus. And he spoke before Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 2. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Here it is. Will they revive the stones from the heaps of the rubbish? The stones that are burned. Will they revive? What are these feeble Jews doing? What are these feeble ones doing? These feeble saints in Fayetteville. Can you not hear the enemy mocking already, God? What are these feeble ones think they're doing in Fayetteville? What are these feeble ones think they're doing in their family? What are these feeble ones think they're doing trying to have a prayer ministry in our school system? What are these feeble ones trying to do having a prayer ministry in the government systems in this land? What are these feeble people trying to do? Will they try to bring revival? Are they trying to revive these stones? Matter of fact, the scripture calls us what? Lively stones being built up as a habitation unto God. I'm telling you, these, li these lively stones need to be revived stones. Our stones have been burned out with tradition. Our stones that were once lively have now become burned out with tradition and the ways of man which make the word of God of what? None effect. None effect. And so because of that, we've got some ashes on our stones. And these stones have got to be renewed. They've got to be washed. They've got to be ready and to be replaced back on the wall. And so we've got, we've got, we are like these lost stones that are covered in the dirt. But the Lord's saying, I'm trying to send some laborers here to take these stones and rebuild them. And put them back in their place. Put them in the right alignment so they can function in their position. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Will they revive these stones? See, there's always enemies of revival. Mm. There's always enemies of revival and awakening. The Sadducees in the New Testament, they didn't believe in a resurrection. What is a resurrection, guys? It's a revival. Just as Sadducees were existed in that day. He quoted it earlier, there's nothing new under the sun. There's still Sadducees today. And I love how, how Perry would say this. He would say, they're Sadducees because they don't believe in revival. Why? They're sad, you see. <laughs> They're very sad, you see. Well, why are they sad? Because they don't believe in revival. And when I say revival, guys, I'm talking about Jesus. Make no mistake about that. I'm not talking about a series of services. I'm talking about somebody that walked in the fullness of the reality of the kingdom. And who said, we can do the same thing he did. That's revival. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Will you revive these stones? Verse 6, Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Right. Now it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored. And here's the kicker, guys. And the gaps... We're beginning to be closed. They became very angry. They became very angry. Notice they went from 
Oh, <laughs> it's funny. Now they're getting a little more concerned. They got a little furious. Now they're getting really angry. You see this escalation each time there's another layer of the wall going up. Each time there's another layer of those stones that are being revived. Each time revival bursts in another church or in another region, that religious system starts getting a little more furious. What they thought was funny, now, now it's becoming a lot more furious. And they're getting a lot more angry. And they get angry not just when the walls go up, but when the gaps are being filled. It says, when they saw the wall was halfway built. So know this, anytime you're building a ministry or, or a function or trying to build your family and you're making progress, you get about halfway there, there's going to be another attack that comes against you. They, they got the wall halfway built and they started filling in the gaps and that's when the, it angered the religious structure and the religious system that, that's a third time. And they try to come against them that third time. So anytime they see there's progress in revival or there's progress in reformation or there's progress in rebuilding, religion thinks it's rebellion and they always try to come against it. Especially now that you've got a thriving prayer ministry and the gaps are being filled. Amen. said, I sought for one to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. He sought for one. His eyes go out searching to find that one that will stand in the gap of, of intercession and make up the prayers and call forth into remembrance the things that's been spoken over people's lives, the things that's been spoken over a region, the things that's been spoken of in, in, in your personal life. Paul told Timothy to wage the warfare with the prophecies that's been spoken over you. How do you wage the warfare with prophecies that's been spoken over you? Through prayer. Through intercession, you take those words and you send them back to the throne. Come on, come on. Verse 9, it says, Nevertheless, thank you, Lord. Now let's look at verse 8. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Hear me on this, guys. And anybody that's listening, it's... thank you. Gotcha. Got it. Anybody that's trying to create confusion, as you're trying to rebuild, know that confusion will be created against you. As you're trying to rebuild and function in, 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 in the things that God's called you to do, and you start making progress, and you get about halfway there, and now you're starting to have the gaps of prayer filled in your life and in your ministry, all of a sudden that there's going to be somebody or even a group of people, because it says they conspired. A conspiracy is more than one person. So as they, they conspired to create confusion. So be on guard, watchmen of the house, that there I would say to you, as you continue to rebuild in this area, watch for confusion to try to come in. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. See, what did they do? They set up a prayer ministry. They set a watch, prayer, day and night. Night and day, 24-7, praying and watching, praying and seeking, praying and working. Then Judah said, the strength of the labors is failing. There's, no, there's so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And the adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them. So here's another escalation again of the religious system, guys. They went from funny to furious to even more angry. Now they're at a place of murder. Mm. I'm going to create confusion, and when they're confused, I'm going to strike. When they're confused, I'm going to try to murder them. I'm going to murder the mandate by creating confusion. God, hallelujah. Therefore, verse 13, Jesus. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall and the openings, at the openings. And I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Again, guys, this is a picture of families being placed in the position of humility. They were in the lower parts of the wall. And as they were building up, they were a picture of saints being fully equipped. They had swords, and they had spears, they had trowels. They were a picture of saints being fully equipped for what they've been called to do. 
And I looked and I rose and I said to the nobles, to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brothers, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, your wives, and your houses. This is the Nehemiah mandate. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. This is the Nehemiah mandate, guys. This is what we've got to be doing. Fighting. And it says, And when it happened, when our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall and everyone to his work. And verse 17 says, Those who built on the wall and those who carry burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked construction and with the other hand they held a weapon. And every one of the builders had his sword girded his side as he built. And the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles and the rulers and the rest of the people, The work is great and extensive. It's not an easy thing. And we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So he's got families equipped. They're on their wall. They're working, but they're out of sync. They're working, but they're out of sync. And so there had to be uniting under a certain sound. <laughs> so Nehemiah said, bring me a trumpet player. Bring me somebody with a shofar here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release specific sounds. There's going to be a sound that goes out which says it's okay for you to work. Then I'm going to release another sound that goes out to let you know it's time to fight. So there were two sounds that was being released from Nehemiah's mandate. He goes, I'm trying to unite you for the fight. Let's unite for the fight. Come on, man. Let's unite for the fight. And when you hear the sound, when you hear the sound, come together and start working, depending on the sound. We're going to work or we're going to war. But either way, we're fully equipped. <laughs> we have a sword and we'll fight. We also have a trowel, which we'll labor. So depending on what sound I hear from the, from the king, what sound I hear from the throne, what sound I hear in prayer is going to tell me what I need to be doing in this season. Is it time for me to work or is it time for me to war? Man, that's good. Hmm. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. So they united under a sound, but know this, guys. The enemy will try to bring a counterfeit sound to throw you out of sync. The enemy will try to bring a counterfeit sound. This, again, goes back to creating confusion. But he'll try to bring a counterfeit sound to get you out of sync, to stop you from laboring in what he's called you to do. Here it is. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 9. And I'm closing here. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, for they were all trying to make us afraid, saying their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Mm. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. And he continues to pray. Verse 11 says, and I, and I said, said, such a man as I flee, and who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Verse 12 then I perceived that God had not sent them. See, what had happened in this time, the enemy sent in some false prophets to create a counterfeit sound to get the workers and the warriors out of sync. And if I can get the workers and the warriors to lay down their weapons and lay down their tools, then nothing will be rebuilt. Revival won't come to the city if I can get them to lay down their weapons and their tools. So the enemy hired false prophets to come and instill confusion and then fear. To get people fearful of working and warring after the things of God. Hmm. Verse 12, Nehemiah says, Then I perceived that God had not sent them at all. You've got to be really sharp in this season, guys. Amen. But that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalat had hired them. Notice that the enemy will hire people to hinder you. 
The enemy will hire people to hinder your work for the things of God and His kingdom. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. (laughs) See, he releases a counterfeit sound to get you to be in confusion and in chaos. And when you're in confusion and chaos, fear rises up. And then you'll start functioning out of fear and not faith and end up in some trial, some snare, some sin, something like that to lay the tools down so you will no longer work and war against the enemy's camp. But God. (laughs) Come on, somebody. Verse 15. says, So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. And verse 16 And it happened when all our enemies, all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations around saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Hear that. When they saw the wall was completed, and they tried to bring all hell against it, And it couldn't stop it. It couldn't stop the work of the kingdom. It couldn't stop believers that come together in unity. It couldn't stop believers that was united under a sound. It couldn't stop people that heard the sound of awakening. It couldn't stop those that heard the sound of the abundance of rain. It couldn't stop those that heard the sound of... Of revival, They picked up their tools. They were positioned on the wall. They started working. They started warring. They started fasting. They started praying. They started weeping. They started reaping other saints. Mm. They started coming together as one. (laughs) Come on, somebody. They started coming together as one. Then all of a sudden, the watchmen were a little bit taller on that wall. And as the wall started building, I believe the watchmen stood. When that wall was halfway built, I believe there were some watchmen. This is just me. I'm not saying... Take it from there. I just believe from this that the watchmen saw the half of the wall built and they start as a prophetic act. They stood upon it and they started looking. Oh, I see confusion coming. Get ready, gatekeepers. Pick up your sword. Trumpet man, blow the sound for war because I see some confusion coming. Mm. Batten down the hatches, guys. Don't let it in. Keep my gates closed. Keep my gates closed to the confusion. You won't come at me with gossip. You won't come at me with confusion. Let's bring that other person in the room and let's settle it right now. Come on, man. Jesus, I don't know where that came from, but hallelujah. Shut the gates. Lock down the gates when somebody tries to bring gossip and confusion at you. Keep the focus. Hear the true sound of the trumpet. Hear the true sound of awakening. Hear the true sound of worship and warfare. Hear the true sound of revival. Hear the true sound of awakening. Hear those sound, guys. God always releases a sound before there's ever a move. He always releases a sound before a move. There was a spirit, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters in Genesis in the face of the deep. There was just a hovering. And if you read, they look at that word hovering, it's, it means to flutter. Hmm. Just flutter, 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 flutter. And all of a sudden, God said, let there be light. Light came forth. Let there be light. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go. Sound released. Movement of the people. There was a mass exodus. Sound before a move. Sound before a move. Joshua, take the saints, march them around Jericho. Right. Be silent. Be silent, but notice your footsteps still make a sound. Keep your gates closed. I can't allow confusion to come in because we're about to take a city. We're about to take a city, and I can't allow confusion to come in, so keep your gates closed for a season. Keep your gates closed for a season. Let's stay in unity. Let's stay united under the sound of silence. It's the paradox of the kingdom. 
Let's stay united under the sound of obedience. Amen. The footsteps were the, was releasing the sound of obedience. Each step was an obedient step. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Each step was a walk in the Spirit, not of the flesh. Amen. Then all of a sudden, because you could steward your silence well, I'm going to give you a voice. Because you steward your silence well, I'm about to give you a voice that's going to take a city. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. So on the seventh day, what did they do? They released a sound. And then there was a move. Walls came tumbling down. You know the song. It's still a sound today in the form of a song. That tells you the eternal power behind a sound before a move. Oh, Jesus. Gideon had some clay jars. Empty clay jars. Put some fire in it. Put a little candle in there. In the darkness, in the nighttime, go surround the camp of Midian. And then here's what I want you to do, Gideon. I want you to take those clay jars. I want you to break them. And all of a sudden, guys, it was the sound of brokenness that revealed the sight of fire that caused the enemy to flee seven different ways. There's a sound before a move. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Again, Nehemiah sounded the trumpet and the workers moved up on the wall. Amen. Elijah heard the sound of the abundance of rain and what? He outran the chariots. There was a sound before a move. Another one, guys, again, Mary, Mary, mm, thank you, Lord. The alabaster box. Mm. The alabaster box was filled with fragrance and fervency. The alabaster box was broken, the seal broken, and all of a sudden, a movement of worship was released. The sound of brokenness created a movement of worship that everywhere that the gospel shall be preached, that this lady should be mentioned. Come on, somebody. Mm. Son of David! Son of David, have mercy, mercy. Bartimaeus, sound before the movement of his eyes were opened. Son of David, have mercy, have mercy. Son of David, I'm sitting in darkness, and you're the son of light. You're the son of awakening. I need revival. I need awakening because I'm blind. Son of David, I'm going to release a sound and you're going to release a move. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. On the cross, you had the sound of the nails piercing the flesh of our Savior. Mm, hear it. Can you hear it? I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear the hammer. I can hear the steel of the hammer. Mm. Piercing. He stewarded his silence well mm. before the priest. And God gave him a voice to say, it is finished. Amen. And then the whole earth moved. Mm. It said the shaking. Guys, I'm in the book. I ain't making some stuff up here. The sound, it is finished. Darkness came on all of a sudden. It says the earth shook sound before a move. Oh, oh Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There was a sound of that stone rolling away. Sound. And then a move. Jesus came out of that tomb. Sound of the stone rolling away. And Jesus moved out of that tomb in resurrection power. Amen. Come on, somebody. Ah. Uh, the believers were sitting in a jail cell. 
all of a sudden they released a sound of praise and worship. What happened to the prison doors? They moved wide open and they walked out. Sound before a move. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. There was 120 in an upper room. All of a sudden, it says there came a sound, not from earth, not from man, not from tradition, not from religion, not from some counterfeit thing, not some false prophet. No, there was a sound release from heaven on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, there was a sound that came from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. Then cloven tongues as of fire sat up on each of them. And then, then what? They say, oh, nice fire, brother. I like your fire. They moved out of the upper room. And 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Sound before a move. Are you hearing the sound, guys? Are you hearing the sound? Or has the enemy been sending some counterfeit signal to try to cancel out the, the sound? There's been a lot of noise cancellation I'm hearing in my spirit. There's a lot of noise cancellation where the enemy's been trying to, to, to deafen your ears to the sound of revival, to the sound of awakening. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sound before a move. Thank you, Jesus. There was a sound of Martin Luther taking the 95 thesis saying the just shall live by faith. Hammering it on the door of the Catholic Church and it released a movement called the Reformation. Sound before a move. What's the sound over this region? What's the sound that he's trying to impart to you? Do you hear it? It's the sound of revival. It's the sound of awakening. It's the sound of the prayers of Jesus who's at the right hand of the Father making intercession. Amen. Partner with his prayers. And watch revival and awakening happen. <laughs> uh, not just in your life, but in your, in your region, in your marriage, in your finances. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah.